Tanto Lee, and uh, today I will talk about the uh, some sort of the, the modeling studies. Uh, so the title title is toward the better representation of clouds and precipitation. So I think that this title is uh, somewhat ambitious, <laughs> but uh, I th I think that we are going to uh, we are definitely going toward the better representation of the cloud present cloud and precipitation in a modern sense. So, uh, in my one hand, there is a side visual of my public's mother, and on the other hand, I have uh, cloud Doppler observations. So, between two hands, there is a uh, so-called Ford simulator. I will talk about later. Uh, first of all, uh, this work is core with the and 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 the so I think that uh, some of you are very famili familiar with uh, cloud modeling. Uh, so some of you are very uh, ex may have ma many experience, but I think I guess that some of you uh, just know about the cloud, but uh, doesn't know much about the cloud modeling. So I will start uh, my story with very well known. Uh, things uh, about the aerosol indirect effects and cloud aerosol interactions. Uh, I think that many of you are familiar with this, this figure. Uh, this figure shows the aerosol indirect effect. Uh, if the number of aerosol particles increases, the, the typically the drop size decreases and the number of concentration droplet increases. So the, uh, the solar radiation will be reflected more. So, uh, it means that the cloud albedo is will be increased, and more of the precipitation will be decreased because of the the typical droplet size is decreased. So the usually the uh, hypothesis that the cloud life cycle will be uh, will be longer. So to study this aerosol indirect effect, uh, we need to think about the collision of drops and the rain formation. Because all of this story are uh, about the, the, the growth of the drops in a polluted or clean environment. So we need to study about the collision of drops and precipitation formation. But theoretically, uh, droplets, individual or many droplets, uh, grow by condensation. In other words, vapor diffusion and the foam drizzle <coughs> by collision. But, uh, usually in condensation, the radii of drops become similar because the, uh, simply saying the, the rate of change of radius in condensation process becomes slower as the radii, drop rate radii increases. So the, uh, in mathematically, dr is inversely proportional to the r. So the, the large drop grows slower, and slow drop grows faster. So it means that the, their radii becomes similar to each other. But in collision process, collision becomes rare as drop radii become similar to each other. Because the, uh, usually we think that the collision comes from the gravitation and gravitational force speed. So uh, to collide two, uh, collide two drops, uh, there should be some differences in the terminal velocity and because and so that there should be some differences in size. But uh, the condensation makes radii, the size of drops becomes similar, so the collision becomes there. So our question is that uh, what are the reading mechanisms for the region formation? So somebody said that it's turbulence turbulence makes, uh, turbulence induce the collision between the two drops with which have the similar radius, radii. Somebody say about the giant, giant CCN, giant because the, giant, the initially very big aerosol can activate it with very big drops, droplet. But uh, we can ask, how can we evaluate their effect? It's very hard to examine this question uh, only using observations. So one of the popular ways is to utilize 
numerical models. So that's why I talk about the numerical models, numerical cloud models in this presentation. So what is the cloud microphysics model? Actually, I'm not, I don't know much about the radiation model. I don't know much about the surface model. So I think that some of you are don't know much about the microphysics model. That's why I prepared this slide. It's sort of the activation. Somebody call it nucleation uh, from aerosol to small droplets. And vapor diffusion, uh, it includes the both condensation and evaporation and collision and coalescence, collision and coalescence. The, some, uh, in some cases, the large drop can be break up. Finally, the sedimentation in every model grid box. So uh, I guess that the, the microfix model is one of the ex uh, most expensive uh, process in the in typical numerical model, I think. Actually, I only list the uh, warm processes, if, the, if there is uh, some ice particles, uh, we need to consider about the freezing or melting or deposition. Like. Uh, in, the, in, in the microphysical processes, uh, all, uh, not some, all the microphysical processes depend on the size of the droplets, cloud particles. So, uh, the drop size distribution is the key in the cloud microfist model. So I think that the, the somebody, uh, if somebody asks that, uh, what, what is the most important in the cloud microfist model, then I, I, will, I can say that it's the how to represent the drop size distribution in a model. So there, uh, there are typically two types, actually, recently. Uh, some groups use another way, but typically there are two types of microfluidic scheme. First one is bulk scheme. A bulk scheme parameterized drop size distribution using just a few parameters. Typically, no more than three. So, question: For example, there are 100 per cc drops whose radius is 50 micron. How will they, how will they be represented? represented in a typical bulk scheme? The answer is like this. So maybe the peak is near the 50 micron. Here the x-axis is the radius, y-axis is the concentration. The upper panel shows the normal scale. The lower panel shows the log scale. But we can find, we can easily find that there are, let's say, 20 micron, 30 micron, even 40 micron, because we should we should use a uh, analytic form, of analytic or numerical form of the uh, <coughs> distribution to represent this situation. So uh, it would make a problem because the uh, as I said before, the the width in the drop size distribution is very important to the evaluate the collision process. But suppose that uh, in this situation, if there is no turbulence or there's no other mechanisms, there is no collisions. But if we represent it this by this distribution, there will be some collision. It makes it makes a problem. Uh, the alternative method is the bin microfluidic scheme. Uh, bin microfluidic scheme is on page another, another name. Is side visual microfluidic scheme. Uh, so it predicts the number concentration of drops in each side bin. And uh, they typically use the, uh, some sort of a few, a few tens to about 100 bins. So using a bin microfluidic scheme, the, si the situation before can be reflected by this, just uh, like a delta function. <coughs> so if I stop my presentation here, many of you will think that oh, bin microfluidic scheme is the best. There's there would be no problem if we if we, if we just use the bin microfluidic scheme. But there are some there is a, some severe problem in bin schemes. We call it as 
numerical diffusion. Question. Uh, there are actually the problem comes from that the, the a bin microphysics key must use the the, the fixed bin fixed mass bin grid. So simply saying there are two bins. First, the, in the first bin, the the mass of particle is one gram, and the second one is two gram. If there are ten drops whose mass is 1.2 gram, not even one, neither one nor two. How can you treat them in a bin scheme? The typical answer is that there are eight drops in the one gram bin and two drops in the two gram bin. Then the total number is 10 and the total mass is 8 plus 4 equals 12, the same. So it, uh, the previously many people think that uh, it's good it's a good way to represent this arbitrary mass in a regular bin grid but uh, if we use this uh, it's been it's beating uh, the radar reflectivity is overestimated because the radar reflectivity is proportional to the square of mass so we can easily calculate that the radar reflectivity is overestimated in the bin scheme and moreover, collision will be over accelerated because the, actually the situation is similar to the bulk scheme. Uh, in, the, uh, in the real situation is this, if there is no turbulence, there is no collision. But even in the bin microphysics scheme, there are some, some of the drops has one gram of mass, some of them have two grams, so there will be collision. And the collision has a very highly nonlinear, about proportional to the uh, third power or fourth power of mass. Yes. This figure just illustrated uh, what's the problem. I think that this problem is very similar to the very simple advection equation in an Eulerian space. In an Eulerian space, uh, just to think about the, the simple advection equation, if the initial condition is here and in the next time step, the actual situation should be represented uh, as a, this dashed box. But in a mother sense, some particles <coughs> go to the next degree and some particle remains in the first degree. In the next step, there, uh, the situation will be like this. But the real situation is represented as this dashed box. So there's, there's a diffusion. Uh, th it's not the real diffusion. So we call this a numerical or artificial diffusion. So does this just disappear in a limit of small bin widths? Yes, even though, yeah, it, it, because it's, it's kind of very similar to the advection equation, so theoretically, even though the grid size is very, very small, there will be uh, some, some sort of diffusion. Yeah. So the same situation holds in the mass grid system. Is the, the number of drops, does it need to be an integer? I mean, it's a, of course, in, in real life, yes, but it doesn't need to be an integer, a, a whole number, the number of drops. Can you not just put, uh, 1.2 drops in the one gram. Yeah. At uh, 10 point, uh, 12. No, but <laughs> and here, there are 10 drops with mass is 1.2 gram, mm -hmm. but the mass grid, in a, tip, in a fixed mass grid, the first bin has uh, represented the, the drops with mass is 1 gram, mm -hmm. the second one is left yeah, yeah. Left 2 gram. I, I, I want to, does the, the number of drops, Yeah. is it a whole number always in, in, in the model? Or can you use any um, any number, not an integer, for the number of drops? Uh, you mean the the about the violating the number concentration conservation? Um, no, it wouldn't violate it. It would still it would still integrate. So saying, can you just put? <coughs> I think Bastian is asking, can you just put like seven point eight in one end, seven point eight drops and. You know, two point two <laughs> Yeah, but in this, in, if we divide ten drops like that, maybe the mass will not be conserved. 
mass will look the same. Well, so the, so you conserve the mass, but the number doesn't need to be an integer, so you have more uh, room to play. Yeah, with. yeah, that's another. That's a, actually that's another story because uh, I will talk. With, I will talk about uh, the radio stage, but. Uh, Basically, many many people think that, that the best way is is conserve both number concentration and mass concentration because the number both number and mass are physical. But uh, I will show some schemes in the later stage. But all the schemes does not conserve number concentration exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they try they just try to conserve some higher moments, yeah, like either reflectivity or something like that. But I can say that uh, mathematically, conserving all the moments is not possible. Yeah, it's uh, it's easy to prove, and yeah, because we are we uh, we just use the we just assume the two bins, so only we can conserve exactly two moments. Yeah, because the degree of freedom is just two. So we can we sh we should choose uh, two uh, what what moment should be conserved. Yeah. So uh, traditionally, many people think that the number and mass is physical. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I will show later. Yeah. So the subject of this study is that the so the can you get a reliable solution? Using a bin scheme in the sense of the, the numerical diffusion. So, and what numerics should be used under what resolutions to get a reliable or convert solution? And suppose that we get a solution, then can the result can be evaluated using observations? So, I will talk about that. Part one, <laughs> the collision coalescence. So, uh, collision coalescence, uh, the usually the bin microbe scheme serves so-called stochastic collection equation. So, it's the it's the only formulation in this presentation. <laughs> yeah. Here, the number, the change, the rate of change, the rate rate of change of number concentration whose mass m is increased by the collision between m minus m prime and m prime. It's very difficult. And this number concentration will be decreased uh, with the collision with other masses, m and m prime. So I think that the formation is a little bit complex, but I think that it's easy to understand. So uh, the so th this equation has a form of the so-called differential, differential and integral differential equation. Uh, there are some there are, uh, presented some method to solve this collision coalescence process. First one is uh, represented by the Berrien Leonard, 1974. I will call this BR74 and Jacob Snedder, both scheme, and there are some several other schemes, but. I will examine the three of them, BR74, J94, and BJJ. So here's the solution. It's, it's a little bit unfamiliar to many, many of them, many of you. Uh, x-axis is the radius from 10, 10 micron to 10 millimeter. Y-axis is time from zero to one hour, and the, this Color shading shows the concentration of number, mass, and radar reflectivity. So the, the initial condition will be here, and as time goes on, the number concentration changes like this. Like this. Here the leftmost uh, column shows the result from the J94, Barrier line at 74, and B00. It, uh, all the uh, solution shows the very typical evolution of drop size distribution. Initial drop, initial, in the initial drop size uh, is close to 10 micron, and as time goes on uh, via collision, there are some small number of drops 
radius is about which to as high as one millimeter at the end of the model simple box model integration. And we can find that, that all the solution is identical, yeah, whatever solver I use. So we, we believe that this solution is converged or reference or closed correct solution. But uh, I can get this solution at the very high uh, bin resolution. The number of bins is, is more than 2,000. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, typically, a bin microfilm scheme usually used uh, less than 10, uh, less than 100 bins, yeah. a few tens or 100 bins. So, 2,560 is cannot be used in a typical cloud 3D cloud network. Where did, sorry, where did you get K in the previous slide? Previous? Ah, okay. Yeah, here K means the uh, we call K is at the correction corner. It uh, represents the this uh, swept volume. So suppose that there are two side two side of drops. So a bigger drop uh, swept a volume in delta P and collide with small particles. So this uh, swept volume is included in, in this term K. Okay. So where do you get those estimates of that term? Where are those estimates from? So where, where do you have those estimates from? So you're solving this. Yeah. For yeah. We can. Uh, we we can uh, uh, use. Uh, we can express k as the uh, the the swept volume times some sort of the corrosion efficiency. So actually, uh, we know some information about k uh, using the previous many previous studies. Okay, so you prescribe that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, we, uh, we examine the, the rate of convergence. First, J94 sort of schemes. Here, the here S means the number of bins. So the number of bins is 40 <coughs> times S. So the num the bin number is. 40, 80, 160, and 320. And uh, this color shading shows the, the relative difference. The ra I mean the ratio. Uh, ratio the deviation, uh, the, the deviation expressed by ratio. This red color shows that the solution is overestimated, and blue color shows that the solution is under underestimated. The difference from the reference. Yeah, reference solution. Yeah. So when s equal one, you can find the solution is highly overestimated. When the number number of bins is forty, even eighty, one sixty, you can find the very distinct uh, numerical diffusion or de deviations, particularly in the uh, reflectivity distribution. The numerical diffusion is more distinct as the moment of the distribution increases because the, the numerical diffusion is typically occurs at the right tail of, right tail of the drop side distribution. So the, uh, if we uh, increase the, the moment of distribution, the numerical diffusion will be more clear. But in Berlin, BR74 and B00, you can find very very small deviations compared to the J94. Even B00 shows the anti-diffused or anti-diffused uh, properties. Blue color shows the underestimation. So compared to uh, when the solution at the S equal to where the number of bin is 80, you can find that the, the, the order of error the less than S or number of bins more than 300. Yeah, so you can easily find that the, these two schemes are better than J94. Yeah. Even at the relatively coarse or the some practical mass degree, we can use the number of number bin at uh, 80 number or Seven, num seven bins or 80 bins can be used in a typical 3D cloud mode. So I 
I summarize the convergence rate with these two figures. First one is, uh, first two left graph shows the, the convergence rate as a function of mass grid. Here, the number of bins 40, 80, 160, and 320. So you can find that the BR74 is the best, black line is the best, and followed B00, and J94 is the worst. Actually, very bad. Uh, actually, I test the convergence rate as a function of time, more than time step, from two seconds to 10 seconds. So we can find that the, this red line, B00, shows very small errors, small deviations with respect to the time step. So in this case, B00 is the best, plus by J94, and the variant may not step for <coughs> the worst feature. Uh, so, uh, somebody, uh, somebody know, knowing about the bin microfilm scheme uh, usually think about that the BR74 is called as some sort of golden rule or some uh, to solve the schemes. But I will say that uh, we don't need to use the BR74 because the I tested the, step, uh, the st numerical stability with time step and mass grid width. Here the circle sign shows that the, the model works, uh, the, the model is stable. But this uh, cross uh, sign shows the model is unstable. So in some cases, the BR74 scheme is unstable. For example, when the bin number size, the, the number of bin is more than 300, and time step is at large at 10 seconds, the model is unstable. So because this, somebody, somebody said that the, the time step is very large, 10 seconds, and somebody said the bin, the, the number of bin is typically very large, 300. So it may not be a problem. In many cases, it's right, but uh, I, can, I will say that the, we can find this result in a, some ideal distribution. So we don't know how this scheme works in an arbitrary distribution. So it's very uh, dangerous to use this scheme in a, a real cloud model. And furthermore, in the mass con uh, in the view of mass conservation, the x-axis uh, time integration and y-axis the rich data content because the in this simple box model, we can only solve the collision and coalescence. There's no sedimentation, there's no vapor diffusion, so the mass should be conserved as a constant. There's no mass change. But we can find that the, the mass is changing when you use the variant Reynolds scheme. The mass starts from one, but finally it decreases at, at the lowest 0.6. So this scheme lost 40% of mass. Yeah, it's quite less. Right. So in, ma uh, in, in many cases, uh, the mod modeler used the ad hoc uh, calculation to force to conserve the mass when they adopt the BR scheme. So uh, upon this uh, simple box model testing, we can choose that the B00 scheme is the best. Yeah, it, that's the first uh, conclusion. So uh, in the second stage, uh, we test the collision coalescence scheme with the 3D LDS model. Uh, we used uh, Dharma developed by ECMA, Andy ECMA. And I used a very typical uh, model setup to simulate the uh, stratiform cloud, stratocumulus. Here the number will be 70. And the initial condition comes from a case study from a CAP MBR campaign. <laughs> and the, this gray line shows the, the model initial condition. So here's the uh, first result. Uh, time series of the liquid water pass, precipitation rate, and the drop number concentration. Here the black line comes from the J94 result, and the Red line comes from the B0, the, the barrel scheme. 
but we can we cannot find we cannot assess the differences. The model result is the model result are very similar to each other, and in some cases it can call uh, some sort of random or yeah, something like that. So uh, we move to to compare comparing the the spectrum instead of the very typical quantities like liquid water pass precipitation or drop number quantitation. Sorry, but precipitation is different. Yeah, but I can say that, that it's very hard to uh, observe the precipitation rate exactly in a typical observation. The order is 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 8. Yeah, it's very hard to uh, examine the exact precipitation rate. Usually, uh, in observation, precipitation rate has the deviation of one or two orders. So this is a trivial, this is a trivial model, right? So you wouldn't necessarily expect the average rate to wind up exactly. You know. I'm sorry. Say is, again. This is a trivial Eddy model, so you don't necessarily you necessarily expect everything to wind up exactly, even if you know the initial condition. Yeah. The, yeah. It should be depends on the initial condition, but. Uh, Actually, but I think that the answer will be fine in the next slide. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Can I go? So, but the, uh, what's the meteorological conditions that you're simulating? Is it just like a uh, like a cloud top boundary layer with yep. like drizzle? Yeah. Oh, there it is. I mean, apparently I missed that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. I use. Uh, for the simulator to compare apples to apple region comparisons between the weather and observations. Typically, the uh, cloud of Doppler radar, yeah, the Doppler spectra, Doppler spectra. Usually, x axis is the, the velocity of the drops, and the y axis power, similar to the, uh, the reflectivity. Uh, from the LS model, we can it, uh, we can what we can get is the the drop size distribution as a function of the radius. So we need to transform this like this for this. So the four simulator is used to transform this result to this this one uh, similar to this. And first, uh, we sh uh, show that C pad. Uh, the controlled frequency of the diagram for the radar reflectivity. Uh, here the, I think the menu we are familiar with the C pad, and the, here the figure shows from the result from the J94, V00, and observations. So the, here the horizontal black line is corresponds to the cloud base. So we are not concerned with the below cloud base. In, uh, in J94, say the, the peak near the surface uh, is usually, uh, usually minus 25 or minus 30 dBG. But in V00, the peak is the minus uh, 35 or minus 40 dBG. The reflectivity is decreased. So, but we can find it is close, closer to the observation. So we can say that. Uh, J94 uh, scheme seems to overestimate the reflectivity, particularly below the cloud base. Actually, I tested uh, several times uh, with different model settings.